president and CEO of the CBC Corporation of Canada has said that Canadians would be upset if she doesn't get her bonuses. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Now, I just want to reiterate that you weren't hearing things. The CBC CEO and president, Catherine Tate, insists that Canadians expect her to get her bonuses, that they want her to get her bonuses, and if she doesn't get her bonuses, that the Canadian population will be very upset. She says that 80% of Canadians love the CBC. I'm not 100% sure that I agree with her. And I can tell you that the uh, reason she was called to committee was all about the bonuses and all about her pay schedule and about some of the things that she did while she went to France with, you know, charging the Canadian population for her hotel room because it just happened to coincide at the same time with the, uh, the Olympics as her vacation. Like she didn't plan that, eh? Anyway, I'm sure the CBC picked up the tab to the, to the Olympics as well. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody watched the Olympics, so... The, uh, they just can't stand the woke television anymore. People just cannot stomach it. And that includes whatever the CBC aired. However, I'm going to let you hear uh, MP Couric open up with his approach. I, I think that he was pretty bang on with some of his arguments. So let's just have a listen to this completely out of touch elite CBC president. The board... Uh, provides uh, its assessment of the CEO's performance, and we share that with the government. It's for the government to decide whether or not it, it pays a, a performance pay. And did the board uh, uh, give the assessment that Ms. Tate should receive a bonus to the government? I think the specifics of that uh, recommendation is confidential, but I would say the board has been very supportive of, of Ms. Tate's performance. In terms of, 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 of performance pay bonuses and a severance package, we are in a situation where Canadians are struggling. Um, the cost of living is, 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 is making it unaffordable for so many Canadians to afford the essentials. Yet, when you look at the bonuses, $18 million awarded across CBC, uh, including uh, averaging tens of thousands of dollars to executives within the organization, yet your metrics certainly don't seem to add up with the talking points that are provided. Uh, as you conclude your tenure at CBC, uh, can you commit today... Uh, that you will not take a severance package or bo bonuses for the last two fiscal years. Good idea. You've made several points in that um, in that uh, question. Um, what I would say is, first of all, the um, if we're talking about 22-23, uh, all the results of that year are public. For 23-24. All of the um, key performance indicators set out and approved by the board were achieved, if not exceeded. Thank you. So, so, so with respect, Ms. Tate, I did ask specifically about your compensation. So, so when, it, when the range of compensation that is provided, you make more than the prime minister of this country. That's your compensation. So to get a bonus on top of that at a time when viewership is down, ad revenue for your organization is down. I asked specifically about whether or not you would uh, refuse to take a severance package at the conclusion of your term as CEO. I believe that Canadians would expect that um, the corporation honor its commitments to its uh, non-unionized employees. You believe that... The Canadians would want you to take your money, the non-unionized employees. Can you imagine the disconnect that this woman has in her mind? She has no idea what it means to go hungry. She has no idea what it means to have rent come through the roof. Think of all the things that she gets to write off every single day, sitting in her cozy little job as president and CEO of the corporation. She makes more money than another far left liberal Justin Trudeau who doesn't deserve a nickel of what he gets either with his jet setting all over the planet but do you see how she tried to avoid the question and then he brought the question back she was very combative very hostile I find that he was uh, good in his approach I don't 
believe for one second that she won't take the money and run that she probably has a house in another country already bought and furnished on the Canadian on the money from the Canadian taxpayer and I would wager that the only reason she's getting out at all is because of the scrutiny that the Canadian population is giving her it's too bad we couldn't have an election right now and then we could stop her bonuses stop them cold in the House of Commons not only is she getting the bonuses and not only did Canadians pay for all kinds of her trip to France when she was there for the Olympics, I don't know why she needed to go there for the Olympics, but probably because she wanted the Canadians to pay for her stay. However, all of that is private, it's secret. It's covered under legislation that we don't have, we don't get to know. Now it's you and I are the taxpayer that pay every nickel that she earns in this job. We are 100% the stakeholders in this particular instance. We are 100% within our rights to demand to know how much of our money she's getting. However, you'll hear what she has to say about that position. So, so Ms. Tate, you said that it's confidential, um, that information, but that just doesn't work for uh, uh, Canadians. Canadians look at $18 million awarded in bonuses. The fact that uh, I, you just spent a thousand dollars a night for a hotel room in Paris during the Olympics, and we are are in a situation where you uh, are coming to the conclusion of your term, uh, being paid more than the prime minister of this country makes, and you refuse today to uh, rule out uh, uh, that you will receive either bonuses or so-called performance pay, or a severance package at the conclusion of your term. It's confidential, doesn't cut it for Canadians. It doesn't cut it for parliamentary oversight. So again, I ask, will you specifically today share with this committee whether or not you will refuse uh, a, a severance package or bonus at the conclusion of your term as president and CEO of CBC? As I've said, I consider that to be a personal matter. So, and I believe I'm protected by the Privacy Act in that regard. So, 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 Ms. Tate, um, taxpayers pay your salary, as they do for all of us, and you can Google an MP's salary, you can Google the Prime Minister's salary, but here we are discussing $18 million paid out to bonuses, $3 million paid out to executives. Madam Tate, your own documents show that there are 631 managers at CBC, 43, I believe it is, executives, and you're defending those, the, the average uh, a bonus paid out to executives at your organization is more than most Canadians make in a year, and you're claiming that it's confidential? Madam Speaker, or Madam Chair, through you, I would suggest that it is unbelievable that Ms. Tate would come before this committee with a very specific motion outlining that answers are demanded when it comes to the compensation received by a public broadcaster. These are taxpayers' dollars that are paying for this organization. So, again, I will ask and emphasize, Ms. Tate, at the conclusion of your term, whether it's for previous fiscal year's bonuses or so-called performance pay, or the conclusion of, of, of a severance package, will you refuse that out of respect for the taxpayers that have paid for you to have this role over the last number of years? I believe I've answered the question. Really? Because I didn't hear you say no. I didn't hear you say yes. What I heard you say was a whole bunch of obfuscation. And an obfuscation is not an answer. Otherwise, it would be called an answer instead of being called uh, obfuscation, which, of course, is just a half an answer, not anything of um, pertinence to the con. But I think that you and I can understand that she's clearly going to take that money. Not only is she going to take that money, she's going to try and take as much money between now and January 1st out of the system that she can. Will they pay for her nails to get done? Will they pay for her lunches for the next four and three months? Will she do all of those things and then on top of that, I wonder, does she get a pension from the, uh, as a Canadian employee? I, I'm not 100% sure. We'll come back to Mr. Kirk because he gets another round. There were four rounds, and I'll be telling you the truth, the uh, MP Giovanni one was really explosive, so I'm covering that one separately. But I will cover three of the rounds in this video because they go together in a, in a good story. They show exactly her complete and utter disdain for her performance, she doesn't care how well she did. She doesn't care what your opinion is. She doesn't care how much of your money she wasted. She just does not care. She's just an elitist, a far left elitist who thinks that she is so superior to the rest of us that not only does she not have to explain herself, 
but somehow you're the one who's not allowed to ask. Now just remember that when you're thinking about why we should never limit speech. How dare we question this elite while she walks on their shoulders and gets every and, and milks all of this money from the Canadian who can't afford to either eat bread or heat their home. How dare they question her? That's what it's like dealing with people that can't handle free speech. Anyway, let's listen to uh, this uh, MP from Saskatchewan just completely and utterly tear her to pieces. It is really, really funny. And because today we invited the senior management and compensation at CBC Radio and CBC Television. So your opening statement didn't talk about the compensation you talked, but you never talked about the $18.4 million in bonuses. So let me start there again, if you don't mind, Ms. Tate. To date, I have not heard back on that particular on that year how Correct. about this year 23 24 same thing okay so here's what i'm thinking those bonuses are going to be tied into your exit package in, jo in january when you leave and we won't get a shot at you coming back here in 25 to talk about it and that's why canadians are, are upset about the bonus package and let me give you a few examples because i did a survey of my own and i know it's not toronto it may not be vancouver it may not be Montreal. But here's what my constituents, when I sent out, 1.4 billion a year and bonuses of 18.4 million, that's insanity. That came from Elaine. This is from Carol. I refuse to listen or watch CBC News anymore. You know the metrics in Saskatchewan. Nobody watches or listens to CBC. Here's from Don. Totally unfair to taxpayers and hungry folks in our country. From Trevor. Nobody I know watches or trusts CBC anymore. From Rita. Waste of taxpayers' money to fund bonuses on the executives. Should be a complete overhaul from the CEO and management. That came from Rose. Joanne. CBC has been a huge waste of taxpayers' money to fund this as soon as possible from Dan. As a lifelong listener, CBC has lost its ways. So we had hundreds of responses from little old Saskatoon. 80%, 86% major changes to the corporation or to fund them entirely. 86% out of Saskatoon. What do you say about those numbers? 86% out of a small market like that appreciate the idea that many of these uh the cbc was was rooted in hockey and it was rooted in the western stuff right but they canceled the the they, they stopped doing the um calgary stampede and they just don't care about what's happening in this country and why would they when the liberal government is just throwing checks at them without ever having to accomplish anything then they yell at you and I for not watching them. Then the government says, oh, how dare you not listen to the misinformation and the disinformation that we have carefully crafted and put up on the CBC and many of the other mainstream media outlets that we pay for. How dare you get your news from other sources? Well, we dare because we just don't believe you. What I really think that the CBC, Miss Tate and, and all of the... Um, people the CRTC should be asking themselves is how dare they not give us a product that we can believe in not give us a product that we want to watch not give us a product that we can get invested in how dare they insult our intelligence with this propaganda how dare they how dare they try and tell us that we're not even smart enough to see right through them anyway I suppose that's a different video let's go back to Miss Tate and her obfuscation I've got 30 seconds 30 left. seconds left so from your strategy public affairs and government relations person on average East each visitor spends 37 minutes a month on your platforms 37 minutes a month Miss Tate that is two at issues 37 minutes is nothing. You talk about 21 million each month are hitting your platforms. The number that stood out to me, they're on there for 37 minutes a month. It's deplorable. You're not reaching out to Canadians. 37 minutes a month. Think about that. 
the parliamentary channel that we're getting this from gets more longer viewing than that. 37 minutes a month is a minute a day. So what you're looking at is people responding to clickbait. What you're looking at is the liberal government working in, in cahoots to limit the amount of, of independent media that comes into your feed and you click on this for clickbait or you click on it because you're looking at a TV show, CBC Jam, or you click on it because you're, you're part of the school program that they've got, like they launched a, a propaganda arm into the school so they can pipe it right into your six-year-old. 37 minutes, that's nothing. It's ridiculous. It's certainly not worth giving the lady a bonus. It's certainly not worth giving any of them a bonus. I mean, if you turned a profit, you should get a bonus. If you didn't turn a profit, you shouldn't get a nickel. You should get relieved from your job and given the job given to somebody else. That's what you should do. That's what normal people have happened to them. That's what people who are not in cahoots with the far left government that Canada has in power currently. That's what they have to do. If they stop meeting the performance matrices of their bosses, their boss calls them in and says, listen, you got to do better or we're going to have to let you go. Apparently, that only, uh, those rules only apply to real people. When you're in good with the far left government that also doesn't care what you think, collectively, this elitist crowd, this upper 1%, they can just completely and utterly ignore us at will. Now, MP Kirk gets another turn in round three. They, uh, uh, they saved Giovanni for the last round. And it was, he, he like, that, I'm going to do a different video on that one because I, I want to show the interaction. In this one, though, MP Kirk comes back to trying to get her to take responsibility for the bonuses and take responsibility for her poor performance, which it turns out they lowered the levels of their performance from one year to the next. And then she tries to get really rude and become very conscious, uh, condescending and, and dismissive. So we did do some digging into these KPIs, the, the key performance indicators, and, uh, and some of the targets, and you talked uh, in your previous testimony before this committee a lot about uh, a process. But what I find very interesting is that uh, it's only the uh, uh, reports that come out of the CBC and uh, uh, where, where, where they fan over how great you're doing. Uh, to the tune of maybe the only place that you'd be more popular than that is at a Liberal cabinet meeting. But even today, <laughs> these KPIs, this year or this past fiscal year, you said uh, uh, your own metrics say you met 13 of the 14 performance targets. A massive increase from only meeting three of the 14 targets the previous year. Uh, something doesn't smell right with that. When it comes to the actual meeting targets, tangible, we started going through some of that information and you lowered the KPIs for this past year, uh, is some of them quite significantly. Sorry, you, the years you're referring to? 20, so, 22, so 23 and 23, 24, not 14, correct? Y yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> what was the question? So, See now, in her mind, she thinks that she's going to be um, very, she's being smug, right? She's being condescending. Oh, 23, 22, but not 14, right? Yeah, because why would we ask you about the year 2014? And then, because she wants to send the message that she doesn't care what he has to say, she says, oh, I'm sorry, what was the question? The guy framed the question the way that he wanted to frame it, and she couldn't even find the time to be invested enough to listen to it. That's how little she cares about what you think about her. That's how little she cares what, you, what your opinion on the matter is. That's how little she cares. She wants to send this message to the conservatives that she's, you know, above them, that she doesn't care what they think. She doesn't care what they say. She doesn't care what any of them have to believe. Now, I appreciate the programming that must be coming out of the CBC. I mean, I don't watch it. I'm, I'm not going to watch woke television. I refuse. I, I want my television to be well-crafted. And I find that most of it, the storyline is always the same. It's always the same. And there's no, there's no... I can't get emotionally invested in anything like that. Now that's my opinion, but I, I can imagine that many of the, the con much of the content coming out of there can't be reflective of the nation as a whole. It has to be reflective only of what Miss Tate feels is important or Miss Tate feels is relevant. That's why she loses the prairies. That's why she tries to hold on to numbers coming out of Montreal. That's why every time she says the word radio, she says radio Canada because she's just pompous out of touch and elitist who thinks that she is better than the rest of us, who thinks that she doesn't owe us an answer. She doesn't even owe us 
the courtesy of listening to the convert to the question. Now, in her mind, I'm sure that played off very, you know, that her uh, far left wing was probably cheering for, her or, you know, or clapping or something to that effect. But between me and you, the 99% of us that are that are invested in the in the future of this country, the only message that I heard was from her is that she doesn't care what we think. She doesn't care what we have to say. I get her little echo chamber might be making her happy, but between me and you, the 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 message that I heard loud and clear was that she does not care what we think, what we say, what we want, and or our opinion on the matter. And to me, that should disqualify her from any bonus. She should be in there saying, you know what, I know that the 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 whole thing is collapsed. I know that I had the most trusted television network in, in Canada and I turned it into a, nothing but a trash. I turned it into the most distrusted, you know, news and radio in Canada. But she's not. She's like, oh, Canadians want to pay me a bonus. What was the question? Just a couple of more uh, examples of her, I'll call, condescension. You lowered those KPIs in order to uh, uh, see that they were met. So in other words, what you have, have, have stated is that by lowering the KPIs, your organization and those within management are receiving more information. Uh, what, could I, Mr. Goldberg, could I, res I, could I, I respond to that? I'd um, like to ask, well, I'm, I'm just stating the facts, Ms. Tate. She couldn't handle it, right? Because he, he said information, but what he meant was they're just taking everybody's money. And then he turns to the girl, the guy beside her, because he's the one that approved her bonuses two years in a row, right? They don't act like there's a check and balances. They're all buddy buddy. They're all in there together. I mean, he probably is wishing that he can have her job when he's done. The guy that he's gonna about to turn to, but of course, she doesn't care about any of that. She doesn't respect the process, so she thinks that she should be able to talk as long as she wants, whenever she wants, no matter what the question is. And I don't feel that I'm going to give her that courtesy because she doesn't merit that kind of 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 response you know what i mean it's clear that she doesn't care how much of our money she takes it's clear that she doesn't care what kind of a product she produces all of these things are obvious when you listen to her talk or when you turn on the the cbc in any way shape or form so just this last uh, comment he's going to turn to the other guy it's a pretty good burn that uh, uh, stretch is a new word, and certainly there seems to be some stretching taking place here. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Goldblum, can, can you commit to uh, release to this committee uh, the, the information related to uh, uh, recommendations that you have made for Ms. Tate's bonus and uh, recommendations that you would make to the government when it comes to severance? As I said before, uh, um, our communications with the government around the uh, performance recommendations of the CEO. My understanding is that's governed by privacy. So, okay. So that's the third time in this little snippet that they mentioned privacy. And you have to ask yourself, what are they hiding? How come every time I hear a far left politician talking, I don't hear them talking about doing the right thing. How come every time I turn around, all I hear them saying is that it's none of your business. Why is that? Can anybody explain that to me? Can anybody leave me down in the comments? Why all, all of a sudden, these people who are talking about being virtuous don't feel that they have to explain themselves, don't feel that they have to justify, they don't feel that they have to do anything. They just feel like because they're there, you owe them adulation, you owe them, don't look them in the eye, you know, when they walk by, just stare at your shoes. How come this virtuous crowd is acts like the most elitist crowd out there? How can that be? I thought that the far left was the one where all of the people were accepted. Apparently not the conservatives, apparently not people that want to have financial accountability. And what we hear from these CBC executives, no matter what you say, no matter what you think, no matter what your point is, it's always the same. Oh no, that's a private matter between me and the government. No, that's a serious matter between you and the Canadian population. This is the people that pay the money. This is the people that you rake over the coals. You're sitting there talking about $1,000 a night in France while there are people living in tents because their rent is out of reach. And you think that, that you should be given bonuses? You think that you should be given these bonuses without even any scrutiny or any oversight? Wow. Wow. 
this is the virtue signaling. This is what virtue looks like. I guess all you got to do is just not care what most of the population is going through or not care what most of the population is suffering under or not care what your action has done to destroy the product that you're dealing with. And then you can just live inside of this little echo chamber, little tiny bubble and just feed off the hard work of people that feel you don't deserve your job, but you don't care because you're so virtuous that you have so many scruples that not only do you not care, you don't even feel that you have to explain yourself. Excellent. This is what it's come to. I don't know. You let me know. What do you think? Do you think that she deserves the bonuses? Are you happy that she deserves the bonuses? Or do you agree with Saskatchewan and that she, there should be a complete and utter overhaul and the whole the whole top, every th if they got a manager in their name in the CBC, like I'm not saying the camera guy got to go, and I'm not even saying that the person who does the editing should go. But if you got manager, if, you, if you're responsible for the outcome of this television radio station, you should be fired on the spot immediately. And we can just replace them all. It, it's better to have two years of chaos than to have these people doing anything ever again for Canadian television, at least anyhow. All right. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.